Hello, welcome to Outside Xbox, you're watching Show of the Week. I'm Mike. And I'm Andy. Welcome. So what have you been up to this week, Andy? Well, Mike, this week I discovered the future of music. Oh! In Red Dead Online. Oh. That's literally a glimpse at the past of music, Andy. I can't hear you, Mike. Also, I'm replacing the intro theme. That was terrible. No, speaking of things that are terrible, Red Dead Online. Is it still terrible? Well, that's an interesting question, Mike, and it reminds me of a song. No, no, no. Come to work for me. I say I find things, but really, it is others who do the finding. I tell them what I'm looking for, and they collect it for me from far and wide. All right, Andy, last time I played this, there was nothing to do, and I kept getting shot. Yeah, well, they've added stuff now, Mike, because I was, I was okay. much like you once <laughs> in the past. Where has Crips moved my camp to, you son of a... Crips! Crips! How dare you! Oh, my God. I think he's packed it up entirely. Oh this no! Idiot. Crit. Do you have a dog? No, not yet. That's well, good. let me let me sort my camp out, and then we can yell at Crips some. Okay. So they put in a new update. Mike, yes. Because I was like you, I was like, "Oh, Red Dead Redemption Online is bad," mm -hmm. which is uh, probably not an opinion you're expecting to hear from me. Yeah. Because I love Red Dead. Redemption. Lover of legendary lover of uh, all things Red Dead Redemption. Uh, but I kind of needed like an excuse to go back to it. To yes. Be there. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think they've you done found it. your excuse. Yeah, I think they've I think they've done it because I've spent the last sort of uh, three or four nights actively loading up Red Dead wow. Redemption online and playing it, which oh is not gosh. a thing I'd ever done in the past. So this new update, the Frontier yes. uh, Pursuits update, it's added, it's added three new roles for you to sort of take on yep. um, to encourage sort of role playing and like existing in the world. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you can be a bounty hunter. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be a trader. Okay, and you can be a the boring one. Um, the even more boring one. Yeah, well, the thing is, I think you sort of have to accept that the world of Red Dead Redemption Online is a little bit boring. <laughs> but in a sort of very relaxed, laid back, right. pleasant way. Until you get shot by roving bandits. Yeah, well, we'll get to that. But. Okay. Um, the fact now but you're telling me that bounty hunting is not the coolest of the three. Bounty hunting is the coolest, most fun of the three. But mm -hmm. the thing is, you can sort of exist. You can do all three simultaneously. You've got this like wilderness outfitters now okay. in your camp, which is what you were talking about with the dog and everything. You can yeah. choose your different camps, and you can set your flag, and you can yeah buy a dog ah. if you want. Look at this guy. Oh. And they're saying that in the future you can go on missions with your dog, which is cool. Oh. You can also make Crips look less like a... Less haggard. Yeah. Oh, put, put him in that... In that, a... that... <laughs> well, it's locked to rank 38, Mike. Oh, okay. I still, I've not been back into it long enough to actually be a good rank yet. Okay, fair but, enough. Um... Can't Crips rank himself up? Why do we have to rank him up? <laughs> it's true. Crips, get out there and do some missions. But yeah, the, the three roles thing that they've introduced is yep. actually kind of what I was... Um, kind of what I was hoping they would add, this sort of progression yeah. system. So you've got your three, your three roles here. Mm -hmm. And as you level up, you unlock uh, tokens. Oh, nice. And you, when you're different ranks, you can get different Whoa. sort of cosmetic things. So for example, okay. if I wanted to, I could get this, I could pay $600 to have this Schofield revolver variant. And then you've got right up to distinguished ranks where you can get these like super cool bounty hunting outfits Holy, wow. and like new gestures and uh, new horses. Like, horses and a cool eye patch. Oh my gosh, that eye patch. I know. Um, that's like the bounty hunting stuff and like the collector is a lot more... Less cool. Well, no, it's just a lot more sort of explorer -y That's type. awful. Andy, don't tell me that's not an awful You can outfit. get, look, you can get like a... Unbelievable. Look at that hat. That hat's dreadful. Look at those boots though. Those are cool boots. Uh, the boots are good, but everything yeah. above the boots is awful. Right, okay. Well, <laughs> what about the trader? What do you get if you're a trader? Oh, you get a bunch of, I think the trader's the worst one. You get some <laughs> merchant outfits that don't look great. Um, like. Oh dear. He looks like, you know when Marty McFly buys yeah, that really thing. bad, like, touristy cowboy outfit yes. before he goes back yes. to, yeah, that's exactly what I got. Look like. at this cool pump action shotgun. That is, that is good. I like the, I like the sort the of wrap on it. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty neat. Yeah, the, the way that it works is you can sort of do all three at once. You do have mm -hmm. to pay out uh, to take on the roles in the first place. It's like, yes. 
15 gold for a bounty hunting license, 15 gold for a butcher's table, which is what you need to start doing um, the trading stuff. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, I think it's only 10 for the, um, uh, for the collector's bag. Because it's the worst. Well, it's, that's the thing. So if you want to do bounties, You've got to find somewhere with a bounty board. Yep. Like, for example, there's one right here. Mm -hmm. But it's also, you know, there's ones all over the place. And uh, on the way, you might pass, oh, look, there's a tarot card in that area. Maybe I'll go right. and check it out, see if I can pick up a tarot card on my way. Mm -hmm. And then also on the way, maybe I'll shoot some deer, try and get some pristine pelts, which I'll send back for processing. So Fair enough. Keep them all ticking over at once. Yeah. And you, you can do it all with friends as well, right? Like yeah. Like bounty hunting missions you can do with friends. And yeah. Exactly. You can and go out hunting together. It just sort of gives you a purpose to exist in the world. And mm -hmm. because it's such a beautiful game world, and when you're doing missions in the main game, yeah, it directs you around the, uh, the world to very specific mm. places. Where if, is, if you just want to sort of wander and explore, mm. and especially when you're doing collector stuff, because like all of the weird little off the beaten path places that you come to, like cabins and uh, houses and things like that, and you can go through all the drawers and you'll find collectibles yeah, yeah. and things like that. It's a bit like uh, in GTA V, like mm. when you play single player, the world seems like massively over-engineered. There's like the prison now in the desert and all this stuff that just never gets sort of shown in the main game. Yeah. Uh, and then and then when you go online, that's a, a sort of staging area for online missions and things like that, which is quite cool. It's just, it's just a much sort of slower paced game than Grand Theft Auto Online. Mm. It's like you go in GTA Online and everyone's got fighter jets and they're all like firing rockets at your house and yeah. stuff. Whereas this, they're introducing everything very slowly mm -hmm. as they go. Um, I think the idea is to sort of build up to... Hoverboards. Well, no, just to like a more <laughs> industrialised businesses and player housing and yeah. um, also adding heists and things. But at the moment, they're just trying to build up that kind of role-playing, existing mm. in the world kind of idea. Um, I really want to do a multi, like epic multi-stage train robbery heist. Yeah. Oh, look, a witch. And you love witches. So... It's, yes, I don't think she's a real witch, but this is um, an example <laughs> oh, <what? laughs> of the, the sort of daily changing content. So yeah. each, each week you're getting like, there's like a legendary bounty going yep. up. This week's one is this guy, Sergio Vincenza, right. who is like an ex um, army sharpshooter. Cool. Uh, Should we go get him? I've, I've already done it, so, you know. Will it not let you do well, it again? I don't, also, it was hard and I don't want to die like that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but that was cool. He's like a sniper up in a, up in a tower and you've got a sort of... He's put down mines and things like that, and Yikes. it's you know it's it's a tricky it's a tricky. It's a proper to get. piece of like curated, well designed like content. It's not just yeah. a random dude standing in a bar somewhere that you go and shoot yeah, exactly. Like there. a lot of the bounties are a bit like that, but these legendary ones, you get a little cutscene mm -hmm. explaining who the person is, and it's just it's really nice to have like a reason to come back to this to this world because it's such a beautiful place just to just to hang out and mm. you know several of the evenings this week I've just spent wandering around towns I barely remember visiting in the main game looking for tarot cards or old medicine bottles or yeah. you know things like that and uh, the other thing that I've noticed is that griefing seems way down right. since the introduction of this is that just because update. that you've got things to do now like when we first started playing it there was not a lot to do yeah, that, I mean, that's true. So when there's not a lot to do, people, people tend to shoot each other. Tend to just shoot each other. <laughs> but also, because the world is so massive, you very rarely run into people outside, mm. of, outside of towns. Yeah. And also, I think maybe the penalties for just being a griefer are, are higher now. So right, it's sort of right. not really worth it. Like, I was in the Van Horn trading post yesterday um, doing some collecting, and there was a big shootout going out on between a bunch of players. I was just looking for tarot cards, just wandered through the middle of the street. No one shot me, everyone just left me alone. You just walked straight in between the two yeah. people firing at each other. Like the only thing I've noticed is like a lot of people still just try and tie you up and run off. I mean, that is funny though. Yeah. You've got to admit that. And is you, quite can break, funny. you can break free. Um, yeah. And then shoot them in the head and then <laughs> run off yourself. So, uh, yeah, I just. I had sort of given up on Red Dead Online because it was such a grind and there was nothing to do mm -hmm. and there were so few rewards for doing stuff. But. Um, yeah, I'm kind of optimistic about the future of it now, and I've spent more time this week in it than I have in the past six months combined. Yeah. So yeah, I've been I've been impressed with it. And do you know what I like about what they've done as well? It's a really subtle change, but they've made the player character more mobile. So you know how in the uh, in the single player game and in Red Dead Online when it started, mm. everything had like a real. It's got a sense of momentum, which feels very realistic. But when you're sort of playing online and, and kind of casually, yeah, uh, that sort of 
that sort of slight laziness in the way the player moved was kind of frustrating. And they've kind of just tightened it up a little bit, and you're a bit more mobile now in, in online, which yeah. is quite cool. It's, it is good, and I've um, apparently the the data they've got on the way people play is that the sort of solo exploration collecting stuff is way more popular than like the deathmatch things. Yeah. So it feels like they're adapting the game in response to the way that most people want to play it, rather mm. than that Grand Theft Auto Online thing where it's like everyone wants to race and shoot each other. And like, mm. yeah, I think maybe more in Red Dead, people just want to explore and... So, sort of solitary. They yeah. just want more things to do in that world, like you say. And you know, particularly for you, who has finished the whole of the single player game, it's mm. like nice to just have some more story-ish content. And to also, play. I mean, you you spend, in the main game, you spend so much time of it up here in this part mm. of the map. And then this bit all unlocks like super late, late on, so late you don't stuff, spend yeah. a lot of time here. But like a lot of the story-based missions for the um, uh, for the online story are down here. Plus, there's cool. all the sort of bounty things going plus on. It's down like going here. home, you know. It's mm. like back back to the old New Austin. And you know, it's something they can keep updating because they've got the Guama map from the main game, and then apparently mm -hmm. um, people have found like a sort of textureless version of the Mexico bit from the original. I mean, that'd be really cool if they added it. But then, I, you know, like, for ages, I thought they'd add, like, Liberty City to GTA Online. Oh, yeah. Like, they've got that map basically sort of up to, like, almost next-gen standards. Yeah. Um, why not turn that into a bit of a playground? But I guess you've got to fill it with content as well. Do you know what I mean? It's not just about yeah. plonking the geometry. And it's I was, like I was reading somewhere where something like 60% of Take Two's revenue comes from microtransactions. Yeah, now. exactly. So yeah, it's, if it's, they want to have stuff to sell to people, yeah, they're going to have to keep making it. That's true. That is true. Um, All right, weather's, weather's closing weather's turning, in. So I should probably, probably yeah. time to get out of here. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for coming to my TED talk about why I have started playing yeah. Red Dead Online and again. Thank you for not playing the mouth harp during any oh, of that. Oh, yeah, I forgot about the mouth harp. Oh. If you take over for a oh. second, I'll oh, soundtrack you while oh, you go. Okay, keep going. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's certainly authentic. So I'm really into collecting now. Oh, okay, cool. Um, well, how about you collect me some donuts from a place I like down the road? Yes. One of every kind. All right, I'm on 100%. it. 100%. Oh, no, completion. wait. We should probably read these comments that people have left. Oh, first. Um, okay, fine. But after, collect me those donuts. Yes, we're collecting yeah. so hard. Every kind. I'm the new shaman. I'm taking over from there. <laughs> I'll be taking Excuse it from me. here. Excuse me. Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the state His of this. Face. Good. This Teletubbies reboot is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Do Ebenezer good. He's good. <laughs> it's Ebenezer good. Well, Jane, that was a clip from a recent Hitman escalation in which we had to dress up mm. as a shaman yes. and then uh, kill people so we could unlock a puke grenade. For yes. Mike. Yeah, no, Mike's, I remember. It was Mike's birthday. I've and been Christmas away for a week, present. and this is all sounding vaguely familiar. It happened so a while ago. Good. Yeah. We've all a lot oh, of Oh, I remember the since. puke grenade. Yes. Yeah. No, it's all coming back to Maybe me now. I love the puke grenade. Yeah. Speaking of which, Varun Chaturvedi says the emetic grenade works on NPCs with a white outline in Hitman Vision. Oh ho! So do you remember we the threw an, we threw an emetic grenade into a crowd of into people? Into a crowd, and we and were like, just didn't <laughs> seem bothered. <laughs> this is going to be excellent. Boom! All right, now get out there. Get out there. No one's seen you. No one's seen you. Here There's we go. The gas. Witness the effects. Those ladies. Okay, don't get too close. Oh yes, she's oh, feeling yeah. ill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yes, rather it's queasy. Oh, oh, oh no. Oh, but not throwing up on yourself. Oh no, they have to go, go and find somewhere to throw up, don't yeah. they? Well, I think Mike had very high expectations. <laughs> he thought everyone would just start throwing it up. It would onto be the a floor. puke explosion. Yeah. And <laughs> with a chain reaction. You know when someone else is vomiting yeah. and it makes you want to vomit and it would just kind of emanate outwards from that. Ground zero my, my of Pete. story in the Goonies when he's at the movie theatre. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I remember that film. No, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, um, yeah but yeah, yeah, I think Mike was expecting people to just start throwing up on the floor. But I you it know, might be in, like that. in Hitman, they walk yeah. off and they find someone to throw up when they get to. Of course they do. So why would the, so why would the best mechanism case be scenario any different? is everyone would walk everyone off. Everyone leaves and, puke and queues for the bathroom. But someone's going in a pot plant, someone's in a trash can, yeah. someone's over the cliff into the someone's sea. Someone's going to the pocket of the person who's going <laughs> in the trash can. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah. yeah, that would have been fun. Yeah, but, but um, it's not quite as powerful as that. Well, I didn't, it's I didn't only, realize, it only afflicts the white outline. Yeah, I didn't things. realize this. There's a distinction between like real NPCs and sort of filler NPCs. I like in ambient NPCs. So yeah, if you look at them in Hitman Vision, they've got a real a white outline oh, around yeah. them, whereas others are sort of grey crowd people. 
And things like distractions and like poisons don't work on the ones who don't have a, yeah. a white outline, which oh. was actually news to me. I guess every I day sort is of, a school day. I was sort of vaguely aware of it. Still learning on an instinctive level, but yes. not had ever written it not down. Not on an explicit, like, oh, yeah. actual level. Never actually noticed that before. That's good, so good not to know. all NPCs mm. in Hitman are equal. Some are not like, all NPCs. Yeah. Yeah. Some are like grey crowd people. Some have more AI. What did you call them? Grey. Grey crowd people. Grey crowd people. They have less AIs. Yeah. Okay. God, yeah. what if we're great, great crowd people, Andy? <laughs> and what if John's the white outline NPC of this story? Oh my God. <laughs> this is too much existential. <laughs> too horror. much crisis for the first comment in show of the week. We should probably move on. Emma Byrne says, I recently learned about some secret level exits and I'm desperately hoping Oxbox will use them at some point. In Columbia, there's an umbrella you can shoot down and use it to fly away like Mary Poppins. And in Miami, you can catch a ride on the back of two dolphins. Yes, it's as brilliant as it sounds. John did an audible gasp at the yeah, two Yeah, producer dolphins. John's Mary well Poppins. into the... No, Mary, no, Mary, Poppins, Mary Poppins is, yeah, is what he's into. Okay. Yeah, I mean, that's... I didn't know about that. That's there's the flamingo one as well. Yeah, well, I remember that one. That was iconic. Yeah. But Mary Poppins... I, think, I gotta see. I do like. Well, let's. I mean, let's. Yeah, I'll do it, and we'll have a clip here. There it was. There we go, Mary Poppins. That's nice. pretty good. How lovely. I was, um, He's off to child mind some very scared children. Yeah. Well, I mean, they would definitely behave. <laughs> he like they? comes in on the umbrella. He's just he's just sat in a with chair his with his with his gun like this, yeah. just sort of cleaning it. Yeah. <laughs> And they're like, I don't want to clean my room, yeah. Uncle 47. And he like just puts a bullet in the wall next to their head. <laughs> <laughs> right. He's, yeah. Okay. Sings spoonful of sugar with appropriately oh, changed oh, lyrics. Sugar. Helps the immunity poison. Go Thank down. you. There you go. That's what I was looking for from the song improviser Andy. <laughs> I just I'm more of an ideas person. Yeah, sure. Just yeah. Like, throwing it out there. <laughs> um, I, I just finished the uh, the Haven Island one, and there's a exit you can get because you, you can leave on like a plane or a boat. Okay, Haven Island is the tropical resort new yeah. map, right? But if you knock out the scuba instructor, you can put on his wetsuit, and then 47 just like. <gasps> Snorkels and then up like and just that's where that comes from because I saw someone out. wearing that well I, I saw an image of that outfit and I was like that's a great disguise but it's not really a disguise then it's just I mean, oh, you, you can, can wear it around the level yeah, as there's well. A, there's an ah. opportunity that you have to be dressed as the scuba instructor. Amazing. But, but you can't like his... you can't scuba around in game. No but you can exit the level. They just... haven't added swimming as like a 47 a I guess he's going to swim back to the nearest He's probably got that's... a personal like mini sub moored just off offshore. Yeah. And he's going to scuba down to that mini sub. Yeah. Snorkel or like you know, one, you know, one of those little personal subs where you just hold the the kind of oh, underbars yeah, yeah, yeah. and it kind of the ones they sell in airports. Motors you. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? I guess someone's like, oh, I'll need one of those when I get. You know to what I really want to cram going. into the overhead luggage? Yeah. Is a mini sub. Is a mini sub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go on the go. stage and perform the hits of the shaman. Yeah. <laughs> do 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 pan yeah. pipes. <laughs> Pan pipes. Do you have good? good? He's good. <laughs> it's Ebenezer good. Oh, <laughs> so good. that was suspicious. They're like, you're not the real shaman. Where's Jason Statham in his pants? Ah. Finally, Mark Teague says, Jason Statham also dances in his pants in Erasure's Run to the Sun video. It was like his whole thing. So there is more than one 90s music video with Jason Statham dancing in his pants. It, it, he really cornered the market for pants dancing. Yeah, I guess it was a whole genre of music video. And he was just, <laughs> he was at the forefront. Two. Yeah. Okay. Of it. Who'd have hmm. thought that he'd go on to be hmm. the beloved star of Hobbs and Shaw? Yeah. And other Jason and, Statham um, films. And um, Crank. The Transporter. That's a film. Yeah. Yeah. And all of them, all the good sure. ones. But um, yeah, good, good <laughs> on you, Jason Statham. Yeah. You're done, you're done all I'm right. Good. Sure, you could spend a load of time and money hiring a team of developers, building technology and assembling a game over several years, but who has time for that? Instead, why not just take an existing game, dress it up with some slightly different graphics, slap a different name on the box, and then hope that no one notices. So that was the feature that we did recently, which is about games that were actually other games in disguise. Yeah. They've been sort of reskinned or yes. just changed ever so slightly. Yes. Uh, that I just thought was quite a good premise for a, for a video. Who came I, up with it? I think that was a Mike idea. Oh, well because, done, Mike. Yeah, good job. He'd been talking. What was it we was talking about? I think it was. He's always talking about checks. That guy. Yeah, no, I think it was the Nerf one because he was. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. He was talking about Unreal Tournament. Um, oh, yeah. We were playing Unreal yeah, yeah, Tournament yeah. recently at a oh. work event. Oh yes, and, and he was like, remember, was like, remember that Nerf remember? game that was we basically were, uh, Unreal Tournament? No, Mike, you're making it up. You dreamed it. Yeah. But here is a comment. I Can Sire says, just an FYI, Kirby stole Puyo Puyo again in 1995 with Kirby's Avalanche for the SNES. So I had a Mega Drive, I didn't realise this, but there's 
You know Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine? Yes, Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, or DRMBM as it's known to us beanheads, actually started life as a completely other but mechanically identical falling block game called Puyo Puyo. Which yes, is a, a reskin of Puyo Puyo. Puyo, Puyo. Right. This, the SNES yes. also had the exact same game, only right. instead of Dr. Robotnik, it was right. with Kirby. They reskinned it with Kirby. Oh! So it was like double reskin. Oh, yes! Because I just remember the yes, uh, Machine. All the pieces have fallen in, into place. Yeah. I did, did know about my game. That? I didn't make that ah, connection. Okay, ah, nice. So it was like two reskins removed. Yeah. They were like, oh, we can't put Dr. Robotnik in this because he's Of course a not. It, 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 that, in that day and age, yeah. and it's they didn't unimaginable have... with the, the wall dividing Sega and Nintendo. They hadn't you invented remember? Wario yet. It would have been the <laughs> obvious choice. Yes. <laughs> I mean, oh, what is Wario if it not was a Dr. Robotnik It 12 years, P -P PW, <laughs> yeah. no, BW, before, before Wario. Before Wario. I don't know the if time it's yeah. The time before, before Wario. Before the great coming of Wario. <laughs> yeah. Yes, um, future historians will recall all dates. BW, yeah. <laughs> or in the year of our Lord Wario. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so anyway, sorry. Just, no, it's just an interesting So they're like of, Kirby. It's yeah. gotta be Kirby. Gotta be Kirby. Kirby looks a little bit like the little Puyos. Oh, yeah. And the little jelly blobs. That gives it sort of a weird aspect, though. It's like he's yeah. making them all stick together and disappear, things that look a bit like him. Whereas in Dr. Robotnik's thing, it's like he's clearly. He wants a to turn them form into. <laughs> intelligence than these <laughs> right, blobs. Right, right. So he can force them to go into blocks. But, yeah. Whereas beans, yeah. Kirby, Kirby. Like Kirby, what are you doing? These are your brothers. Why doesn't he just eat them? Why doesn't Kirby just eat the Puyos? Because I mean, that's what Kirby, Kirby does. Why doesn't Kirby just eat everything? <laughs> that's like, you can apply that to every Kirby game. Why, doesn't, why Kirby just... doesn't Kirby just eat everything? Oh my God, why doesn't... T-shirt. He could eat you, could eat your whole family. How are we all still alive? <laughs> why doesn't Kirby just eat everything? Mm. And where does all that stuff go? Oh my God. Mm. This he's, is like, like... he's like the cat from um, Captain Marvel. Yeah. He contains universes. I was going to say, this is mm. like the some Marvel stuff. We need to, mm. Kirby's need to register with the yeah. government to keep their powers in check. Mm. License Kirby's. Yeah. Yeah. There'll be pro-registration Kirby's, yeah. anti-registration, anti there'll be a civil war <laughs> between all the Kirby's. There only, isn't there only one Kirby? I mean... There's only one Kirby in my heart. I mean, there's a lot of... Are, you, mm. are we sure it's the same Kirby in every game? <laughs> Could be a different Kirby. This is a... Yeah, okay. Is he the only all one right. of his species? Can we be sure of that? We're going to have to talk to our representatives. Oh God, this is true. All right. Another comment. TR Mahama says, mm. I really want Eid and Bethesda to make those games, Chex Quest, Super 3D Noah's Ark, in their current engines. I love this idea. Yeah. I think that they should... So in the same way that, you know, Doom looked amazing, uh -huh. uh, but was Doom, yeah. you and want a modern Chex. They take Wolfenstein and make that into the, yeah. the modern Wolfenstein. Oh. Can you imagine... No, no, next... you make it into... Wait, wait, Chex was based on Wolfenstein, right? Chex and... was based on Doom. The difference was that Chex Quest had been modified to turn it into a cheery, non-violent romp that featured no blood whatsoever. <laughs> and oh, yes. Super Noah's Ark was, was based, based on, on yeah. Wolfenstein. So, so the way you look at old Wolfenstein and new Wolfenstein, yes. you look at Chex Quest and you look at Chex the current Quest Doom. 2019. You, yeah, you look yeah. at Super Noah's Ark and you look at the new Super Wolfenstein. Super Noah's Ark. Can you imagine that? The next E3 Bethesda conference, mm. Todd Howard comes out and he's like, "We're always looking to innovate in the field of video games." It's very unflattering impressions <laughs> of the, the marvelous and lovely Todd Howard. Okay, he says, "We're looking. We're always looking yeah. to our past uh -huh. to create the future." So here we are. And we think we found exactly the butt. game for you. Super and Noah's like, Ark. Dun, 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 dun. And then the Chex Man. Oh, we're going to go Chex. His, okay. All racks right. his spork. Yeah. The Flemoids are back. And everyone in the crowd's like, oh. <laughs> It'd be amazing. Mm. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Yeah, I am imagining You're that. Imagining it. And it's bad. <laughs> and it's bad. <laughs> I suppose the reason we don't get those kind of reskins is that actually it was quite easy to reskin a game back in the day when there were like 12 pixels. <laughs> now. And now, like a high def, yeah. like full, full art replacement of Wolfenstein hey. would actually be quite a large job for a small um, Christian friendly family video game developer. Hey, I have absolutely zero experience in game developing. I'm going to say <laughs> I'm confident. it's probably easy. <laughs> when I say it's easy. Yeah. Sure, fine, okay. <laughs> Well, keep an eye out. E3 2020. Mm -hmm. Super Noah's Ark. Bethesda. 2020. Super Noah's Ark. Yeah. Super Noah's Ark Eternal. Yeah. <laughs> well, we're talking about next year, by the way. Yes. There's only three months left of this decade. Whoa! Only three months left of this decade. So 
Damn. Yeah, whatever you're planning. For this decade. Do it. Go for Get it. Get it done. Three months left. Yeah. Man. Anyway. All right, next Tangential, final. but here's comment. another comment. Vizo Kun says, what's a Frankenstein? You mean Dr. Frankenstein's monster, I bet. In the original game Nocturne, set in the 1920s and 30s, Spook House lives up to their name by battling a haunted mansion's worth of monsters, including vampires, zombies, werewolves, Frankensteins, and whatever's going on here. <laughs> I put this comment in yeah, here. Yeah, you chose as, this one, yes, Andy. As I knew you chose it. It's a real hot button topic for you. As indicative mm. of a kind of comment that we've had a, a few of. I love Whenever them. I say a I Frankenstein. Uh, just a PSA. It's actually a sparkling white wine. <laughs> if it doesn't come from the Frankenstein region, region of France. Of France. <laughs> it's not a real Frankenstein. <laughs> if, you're go if you're going around telling people that Frankenstein right. is the creator, right. not the monster, don't do that. Everyone knows. Everyone's read Frankenstein. We all know. It's it's changed meaning now. Frank, people know what a Frankenstein is. You can say a Frankenstein and they know what that is. You don't have to go around correcting people. Although I have been having fun in the comments um, by pretending that I don't understand what they're saying okay. over and over again. So you're so. using your one life wisely <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> no, say more things about Frankenstein. I want to hear. I just, I just think it's, uh, it's un unnecessary to have to make the distinction of Frankenstein's monster, mm -hmm. the creature, mm -hmm. Adam, whatever. Because by context and implication, it is very clear what you mean. Yeah, exactly. And it's funnier to say Frankenstein. It is funnier to say Frankenstein's or a Frankenstein. Doctor's Frankenstein's monsters is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Just, okay. You know, it's. I think a lot of people, it's. It's treated like it's sort of like secret knowledge that makes you seem clever if you know it. But everyone knows. Everyone that. knows. So well, you don't have to. Okay. It's okay. All right. You don't have to do that. Just All let right. people enjoy saying Frankenstein. Okay. You can call it uh, Doctor and Frankenstein's monster yeah. if you like. Go ahead. That's how, Literally feel nothing free. stopping you. Yeah. Yeah. What if we rebranded Frankenstein's monster as Frankenstein and then Doctor Frankenstein Frankenstein's as dad. Frankenstein's dad? Yeah. And we make that the new. Or yeah, we could have the new Frankenstein and Frankenstein classic. How about that? Hmm. Wait, wait. I don't understand which is which in that scenario. Doctor Frankenstein is Frankenstein classic. Oh. And then Frankenstein's the monster, monster is Frankenstein. Is Frankenstein. As yeah. long as we end up calling the green guy Frankenstein. Yeah. I think. Frank, we can I think all Frankenstein be and Frankenstein's dad is. Frankenstein's dad. <laughs> Frankenstein's dad. Frank and dad. Yeah. Frank and dad. Okay. Cool. Frank and dad and Frankenstein. Good. Got right, it. Right. Are we right. agreed? Sorted. Okay, cool, good. So, what, which donuts? Donuts now. Which donuts did you want? One of every kind. One of every kind. Yeah. How many kinds are like there? Like a Noah's Ark of donuts, but halved. Well, there's jam. Yeah. And glaze. There's, there's different kinds. kinds of jam. Sprinkles. What? Different kinds of sprinkles. Oh my god. I'm yeah. going to need a bigger collector's bag. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going. Go and collect me some. That's it for Show of the Week. Thanks for watching. Yeah, and if you happen to be going to video game convention EGX next week, uh, we've got a couple of live D&D Oxventure shows. Uh, Saturday is sold out, unfortunately, but there are still a few tickets for Friday left. Saturday sold out? Yeah. I didn't get a ticket. Do I need Oh, that? Andy. Oh, oh. No, you're not going to be allowed in. I'm not. Okay. We need to find an excuse for Corazon. What, what's Corazon going to be doing instead? Standing outside shouting all, <laughs> everything I say from the door. Right. As close to the stage as I can legally right. get a okay. ticket. Yeah, and then because the bouncers bits. will remove you from forcibly. There. Yes, also Johnny did say uh, if we don't get 2,000 likes on this video, he is going to do a total party wipe Did you? Us. Did he say that? Oh, uh, you know Johnny, you know how he gets. Um, so if you could press the like button, that'd be great. Really help us out. Yeah, yeah. thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. The great thing about the mouth harp, yes. Mike, is that you can play any song instantly. Without having the to great thing about it. the math harp is that there is even a great thing about that bent paperclip. You've name got. name a song. <laughs> uh, do the EastEnders theme. Okay. <laughs> See. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like the three notes it can do. It can't do any notes. It can <laughs> do one note, and but then you can make it go. <laughs> Ooh. Oh god. Oh! You can do that. Don't swallow it. Make a lightsaber. Oh, nice. you, your voice would sound like that forever. Do you ever turn up to a house party and offer to play Wonderwall on it? No, if there's one like leaning against the table at right. a party, sure, <laughs> I'll pick one up. Turn the bottom against the table. Just, and then. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll pick it up and just I say, hey, it first. here's Wonderwall. <laughs> There you go, wonderful.